need to add any new staff because we've already got the computer models to do it. They're, they're using them at the local counties. We have to use them at the state. We have to have nonpartisan redistricting. It may be the one issue that and money in politics that Republicans and Democrats alike agree on. This is an issue that absolutely will be at the forefront, and I will push it. And I believe that with enough people getting wind of this and putting pressure on the on the legislature, this is one thing that should not be partisan. We should mm -hmm. all be able to agree on this, and we need to get this done. It's extremely important. What's that bill number? <laughs> uh, give me a note, and I'll tell you. Sorry. Me. Okay. <laughs> It's, Senator Risser was the original one. Okay. It. So, and we, it's been introduced several different times, so yeah. I'm not sure which number it's at. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, unfortunately, this is one example of a lot of the bills that have, passed, that have been introduced and no, haven't gotten any play because it, they haven't had a hearing. They need a public hearing. And that's one thing you could definitely do, and especially if you have friends who live in the 28th Senate District yeah. in Senator Lozick's district. Yeah. She's the person who's keeping this bill in her bottom drawer. And we need to have a public hearing on it. That would be the first step. It's a bill that's out there. It's been written. The Democrats support it. And it needs to have a public hearing. That's the step one. Yeah. Scott, in the back. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what would the first 90 days of a Kathleen Limehouse governor's agenda look like? <laughs> and, you know, many times on the campaign trail, I heard uh, Walker's got a lot of people did. And what would be your plan to take steps toward more economic development in the operation of the state? Thanks, I appreciate that question. And I am not yet an announced candidate, so I have to leave something for the future. But I'll give you I'll give you a hint of where you need to look. On my website, I have written an alternative budget. What I would have done differently had I been writing this budget. The piece I told you about treatment alternatives and and court, a drug court are, and mental health are in that budget. I was able to pull together, um, how should I say this, a lot of major pieces that should have been done. The Medicaid piece is one, which is changing the funding formula for schools to recognize, among other things, that poor children cost more to educate. That, that, that all of those things cost money. Well, the Medicaid stuff we save money, but the other stuff we cost money. But in the end, instead of giving you a dollar sixty a week uh, income tax cut, I put that money in a savings account, and it would have assured that by the end of the budget, we would not have a seven hundred and fifty million dollar deficit. Not a slogan. You have a plan. For I, yeah, slogan. yeah. It's all there. All the numbers are there. You can check my map. Okay, one more, two more questions, and then I need to go on to another one. Uh, voting rights. You haven't talked about voting rights. The Republicans have been trying to scale back voting rights all across the country. The only way they seem to think they can win is by having less people that would uh, vote for a Democrat be able to vote in the election. So, how would you address voting rights and hopefully expand them? But, yeah. This is a question that I've been fighting with for the last, since we came back home and, and from Illinois and they passed the voter ID bill. My record on this is very clear. We need to open wide the doors of democracy, bring everybody in, and when everybody gets involved in democracy, we have a good working system. And anybody tells you their vote doesn't count, you say to them, you know what? Senator Weinhaupt won in 2010 by one vote per war. If I had not won that election, the Democrats could not have gone to Illinois and stopped, stopped Act 10 because they wouldn't have had enough Democratic senators. I, my constituents who voted in that election affected the outcome of history in Wisconsin. Yes. They didn't know it at the time, but they absolutely did. So thank you, and there's a lot more. But thank you. One more question. Thank you. The question is about privatizing public schools. This may be the greatest challenge in educating Wisconsin about what's happened in the capital in, in the last three years. This is an important part of the town hall meetings that I've been talking about, 
and there is both a very serious threat and a very serious solution. The threat is that there are forces across the country that absolutely want to create a system that looks very different than your neighborhood school, but would be a plethora of private choices that would drain resources from the public schools. The answer is to fund Tony Evers' budget that he requested and the governor did not fund in the last budget. And I funded every single piece of it. It cost about $700 million. And just for a little factoid, there were $4 billion new dollars spent in this budget over the past, over the past budget. More than enough money to totally fund the Fair Funding for Our Future, which changes the formula and holds all schools at the level they are not at now or better. Okay, I, I, have, I have one request that my helper, Tom, who is absolutely amazing and helping me to drive around, is reminding me that this campaign, although it is not based on money, it needs money. <laughs> so please, if you can't write a check today, take one of those cards, take it home, and put it in your bill drawer, and pull it out when you get paid, and send me some dollars. Thank you very much, everyone.